here's the first thing that we think you really need to know. Uh, there are no real entry level cybersecurity jobs. And that is a complete brain melting thing for me to say for a lot of people. There are, there's so much conversation online about how there should be entry level jobs and how come there aren't ever entry level jobs. And, uh, you know, recently I caught a, uh, a, um, a post on LinkedIn where somebody was was talking about how unfair it was and they were really railing on it. And so I jumped in and, and I said, well, look, this is kind of like, um, you know, in the airline industry, there is such a thing as an entry level 747 job, right? Like, like all seven, four, uh, sorry, all 787 pilots have to start somewhere, right? And so that first <laughs> 787 job is the entry level job. But you can't just walk off the street and get it. You've got to build up to it, right? You need like 25,000 hours of commercial flight time in order to be able to even qualify for that job. And uh, and so I put that in the comment. And I and for a week and a half, I kept getting notifications uh, from LinkedIn about people reacting to that comment. And I didn't keep close track, but I, it seemed to me that it was roughly split between you know, half the people saying, yep, that's right. That's the way I see it, Kip. I agree with you. And the other half of the people saying, what's your address? I'm going to, you know, put a flaming <laughs> bag of poo on your uh, doorstep. <laughs> well, I think it's important when we talk about entry level jobs, right? Entry level means different things in different industries. You know, when I started out and got my first entry level job, I got a job as a bag boy at a grocery store, right? That's an entry level job. They could hire me. And by the end of that first day, I was already doing useful work for them by putting groceries into bags and taking it to customers' cars. That's right. entry level, right? Cybersecurity is a little bit different. I can't take somebody off the street, put them in the chair, you know, slap a name tag on them and say, go ahead, you're a SOC analyst. It doesn't work that way. There's extra knowledge you need, just like you can't go and fly a Dreamliner 787 after your first day of flight school. And I think people have a misconception with that. And I think a lot of that, I actually place the blame on the colleges for this because they like to say, oh, there's all this huge demand for cybersecurity jobs and all these entry level jobs are available and they push people through to go get a bachelor's or master's degree, and then nobody wants to hire that person because they have no experience, because they've never done anything in IT at all. And really, when it comes to an entry-level cybersecurity job, in my mind, that is usually going to be something like a system administrator, a network administrator, a help desk, a field service technician, something in the IT world where you've gotten some experience for a couple of years, and then you move into this entry-level cybersecurity job of being a SOC analyst. Because as a SOC analyst, you have to understand how computers work, what normal looks like in the network, what normal looks like for the processes and your registry on the computer. And if you don't know all that, you can't be an entry-level cybersecurity analyst. I think that's where the big breakdown is with that myth of that there's no, quote, real cybersecurity entry-level jobs. Because there are, but they require some prerequisites to get into those jobs. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's right. I think the term entry level is just an overloaded term. I think you put your finger right on it. People are using it in ways that are not true to the traditional, you know, definition of that, right? Like, you know, that I can get hired as a as a as a as a bag boy or I can be hired at McDonald's and I don't need to know anything. I just need to have some basic ability to show up on time for my shift, right? Clean and presentable. So that term is absolutely overloaded. And that's kind of what I was trying to get at, you know, when I responded to that LinkedIn post was trying to explain, you know, that it's different. But there's so much about cybersecurity that just doesn't translate. And, you know, this is something we're going to that we're going to uh, talk about in a moment in the second thing having to do with bachelor's degrees. But um, but before we do that, I want to make a I want to uh, tell everybody in the audience just a couple of things. So if you really want to unpack this. Uh, idea here. We actually did that very recently in episode 49. So if you just go back to yourcyberpath.com forward slash, uh, is it just 49, Jason? That's is that right. the way that worked? Yeah, yep. yeah. So just do that and you'll be able to pull up that episode and you can listen to it and really kind of dig deep in there. The other thing I'd recommend is go to cyberseek.org and when you go over there, they have a career pathway. It's one of the things that they offer. And when you go over there and click on that, you're going to see exactly what we're talking about. You're going to see four columns of different types of jobs. And on the left, it's going to start with feeder role. And then the next column over is entry level. So right there on the cyberseek.org website, which I think of as sort of like the master directory for you know what's going on in the job market, right there, it talks about exactly what Jason was just explaining. Yep, exactly. So again, it's yourcyberpath.com slash 49. It'll take you right to episode 49, which is why entry-level jobs aren't really entry-level. 